There we are. <laughs> that was easy. Come on. There we go. Well, so more scratch building cars. Fancy that. Ah, more of the same. Well, only they're going to be different. I don't build too many of the same cars twice, except when I'm building two of them at the same time. Last week, I showed you this stack of blanks to get started with. We've used, I've used two of them. I've got six more to go. I'll probably build six more of these before I even get done with the six that are left. Uh, in fact, I know I've done that at least twice since I took this picture, but we'll use two more tonight. And this will be a little simpler than last time. You can see my other uh, favorite uh, workspace here, the uh, top of my radial saw. Uh, it's not the recommended place to be building models, but it is flat and uh, handy when it's empty. It's a nice height, so I can sit at this actually. Actually, I stand here. I'm, I've actually gotten to be more comfortable standing up while I'm modeling or building models. Um, I'm running around between everywhere else in the house and in my office and back and forth. So standing up, I run in, fiddle with stuff a bit, clamp it up and walk away so I don't have to watch the glue dry because that's not, not very exciting. Uh, so we've got what look to be gondola sides over here. These are not four by fours. These are three by fours, I think. Depends, it depends on which type of uh, stake pockets I'm gonna use. But I build the sides up first, put the stakes in first, and where the stakes go, it gets to define where the stake pockets go. Because if you put the stake pockets in first and think you're gonna line it up right, not gonna happen, unless you're incredibly uh, diligent beyond most, most mortals. So I build these things in advance, be done with it. And just a few nut bolt washer castings on each board to hold it all together. Uh, this is the outside. So I don't, these look like uh, one brand of Tishi uh, nut bolt washers. This is the inside because if it's empty, you can see the inside. And this is just a strip of styrene. In this case, a piece of metal uh, being modeled with a, a different set of washers and nuts on it, just to make it more interesting because if it all looks the same, it gets boring very quickly. Martin, can I ask you a question? Sure. How do you get your nut butt bolt casting so in such a straight line and equally spaced? I wish I knew. I don't, I don't think they're that straight. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, honestly, it's all glued up. I eyeball it. It's a very bright light up against my uh, variable speed drill press. So I'm not drilling them by hand. Uh, uh, this is as quick as I can. Bang, 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 bang. I don't do a lot of thinking. Uh, maybe that's the key. Don't think about it. Just, just nail the holes all, and they're all the way through. So you don't have to worry about it. Got it. Thank you. Oh, no problem. And you can see this car has a totally different set. These are uh, Grantline parts. Uh, this is the, these are brand new ones over here. These are some ancient ones out of my stock. The new ones are this kind of cream colored, or I don't know what color that is. And you got this gray. And the really old ones, which I still have in, a, in my uh, stock, are the black ones. So I can tell how old they are. Uh, clamp it all together. I really like these little clamps. I don't, I, I think I got those at Home Depot years ago. It's particularly nice when you clamp something like this together. It actually holds the car up nice and straight for you and in, in place. So you can actually see what you're building. And you can get the, the two ends uh, aligned pretty neatly. Of course, the scribe siding here, this, these are individual boards actually in this case, uh, you've got a line right there. So getting it not lined up is uh, pretty hard. Not, you know, you, you should not have any difficulty getting it all lined up. It's, it's just, it's already made there for you. Uh, the basic underbody, uh, some resin bolsters, Drilled and tapped for 440. Uh, various different sizes of uh, queen posts on the needle beams. One piece of uh, surgical silk passed through the car four times under tension each time through. Thread on a Tishi turnbuckle. They're down tight on the uh, needle beams now, but they'll get lifted up later. 
Uh, these are actually, these are four by fours because these are the all nation uh, stake pockets. And they're a little larger than Grantline. Grantline won't hold a four by four, but strangely enough, it's perfect with a three by four. I know it's an odd size, but you can get three by fours from uh, Kapler and Mount Albert. Well, you put all the little bits and fiddly bits and bobs in, and now it looks like it's everything belongs here. I'm not sure where I got these white metal castings, but I rather like them. I'm gonna be very sad when I run out of them. Uh, I don't have anything else like them. Um, I'd really been uh, daring. I would have made a mold and made my own, but uh, you know, you're not supposed to be doing those sorts of things with other people's stuff. Uh, a little brass chain over here connecting to your wire into the uh, brake stirrup. You can see I've got a brake shaft already in there. And for odd reasons, I've only got stirrup steps on one side. I know I'll put them on both sides. We'll see them on their own both sides. I must have been in between. Yep, there we go. Top side view. Okay, so we've got stirrup steps. Those are from Scale City Designs. They're white metal castings. They're rather nice. And you'd think that they wouldn't be very tight on the sides, but this is where that, that combination of a little bit of goo, goo it together, take the goo apart, take the joint apart, take the casting off, add a little CA to the white metal, put it back on place. You'll bend the casting before you get it off of there now. Okay, so uh, I've added, uh, there's an extra hole in all these. So there's another nut, there's a nut bolt and washer or a rivet uh, from Grant line in, a, in those holes. A uh, nice brake wheel. I'm not quite sure whose that is. It's not precision scale. I've forgotten who made those. But the uh, Ratchet and Paul, you got to have a Ratchet and Paul casting. Those are really just add a little bit of detail there. And a little bit of a platform that's a piece of styrene angle that's just glued in place. And then there's, I can tell you, there's a nut bolt and washer casting. On, uh, there's at least two of them underneath there. These bridge pieces across here are actually structural. This nut bolt and washer casting is just the top of the nut bolt and washers. No, the sprue is not down in there. What is in there, I actually drilled through this into this stake and side, and there's a uh, steel pin, literally a pin. Just cut the head off a pin and shove it down in there with some CA. So that actually is locked together. And this just covers up the steel pin head top. So, and this is still all removable. This is not, these are these sides are, I never glued the sides in. So if I really wanted to take it off and have a flat car again, yeah, I could do it. Why I want, want another boring flat car, I have no idea. These are much more interesting than flat cars. So the ends are just made up of individual boards, same as the sides. Um, more bracing, more in nut bolt washer castings. Fairly straightforward, actually. This is, this is a fairly easy build. Uh, you take it outside and throw paint on it. Uh, did that, I think we had a really nice day in the 70s in February. So it was quick run outside with every single car and possible thing I could paint with a, inside a cardboard box on a pair of trestles out in the driveway. My neighbors must think I'm absolutely bonkers. In fact, I think uh, when I'm out there with a chainsaw, some of them actually know I'm bonkers because I'm wearing a hockey mask at the same time. So it's kind of frightening, uh, but you know, nice paint job. Go back and touch things up, add some arch bar trucks, put the uh, truss rods up on the uh, queen post, trim off the excess off the ends. And okay, I added an air hose at each end. Uh, air hoses, I add those to that 33 thousandths or 31 and a half thousandths brass wire that's in there. It depends where I got it from as to the size. This is a, that is a brass precision scale uh, casting. Not the, now, joining in it, a piece of end-to-end -end brass doesn't work very well, it's not very strong. What I actually do is I have, is a piece of brass tubing. That's 3 fourths brass tubing OD. I've forgotten what the ID is, but it's about 33 thousandths. So I actually make a union joint, a union coupling, and solder the, a little piece of tubing onto the end of the, uh, brass casting and then solder uh, or shove it on top of the uh, piece of uh, airline brass tube, uh, brass wire, usually with some goo or CA, or if I'm really determined, I'll actually solder it all together. But once it's on there, it doesn't go anywhere. So that's one of the cars. And here's its mate. So the, this is a uh, 
a matched pair. Because I, I got into building a, a matched pairs for a while. I'm still building a matched pair on my bench right now, but it's going to be a month before you ever see those two. Much uh, far more complicated and probably more than I should have bitten off. It's, it's uh, proving to be a bit of a challenge. Hey, Mark, so, how do you know that you're, how do you, how can you tell the difference between these twins? Uh, they are, they actually are slightly different. Um, and, and it's also the order of the slides I put them in and, and the label of the picture, but they are slightly different. Uh, you know, a uh, couple of 30 seconds on the length of the, uh, the sides because I, I didn't cut these all, I didn't cut all these sideboards simultaneously. I cut them individually, or sometimes I do stack them up and just run through the bandsaw. You know, if I'm in a hurry, I don't wanna, I'm impatient, don't wanna wait, uh, I just uh, stack up. This is, uh, oh gosh, looks like about, it's either three by 16 or three by 14, something in that range in O scale, or it's four by stock, which would be a little too heavy, but I just stack those up Run them through the bandsaw. I got a 12 inch bandsaw with a half inch blade on it. It's amazing how fast you can go through a stack of basswood with a bandsaw. Uh, and your fingers if you're not careful. So, you know, I, I, I advise caution when doing such foolishness. And that's the end of that build. I stopped there. So that's the end of that. And uh, anybody got a, a host of questions or not, uh, throw them at me. Uh, Martin, I do have a question about the insills where you're running the um, silk through them. Yeah. Um, in the in a future presentation, could you show us the insills? I think a picture would help me understand how you're wrapping that because the way I'm envisioning oh. it, you would still see the silk on the outside of the insill. So I'm missing something. Oh. I Okay, I do cut, I cut that off. So it's, it's, it's all that you see, I, I trim it off at the nut bolt and washer casting that's actually holding it in place. So I'm drilling a hole at the end with a number, well, it depends on the size of the nut bolt, nut bolt uh, washer casting, but uh, say that the ones I'm using right now from Grantline, uh, it's a number 56 drill. So that plus the number zero silk is pretty snug. So okay. the, silk's, the silk's in there already. Well, one, one or two pieces, it, it's passed through one or two holes. Uh, and then I hold it taunt, stick a, a nut bolt and washer casting in the hole, sprue and all with a, with a puddle of uh, CA on the uh, plastic casting. Just shove it in there. Sometimes it's not as easy as it sounds because it, I, you really want it to be tight. So it's, yeah. friction, it's friction plus CA. Okay. And after it's gone, and as you go through each end, keeping it tight, another nut bolt washer, CA, stick it in, another one. So you do all eight. Okay. And so there's, there's, some, there's some silk left on the outside. I come back a day later or an hour later, depending on how much of a hurry I'm in. Number 10 uh, scalpel blade right up tight close to the nut bolt washer casting. Cut the silk off. Just snip it. Okay. I've, never, I've never had an end. I've never had one of these fail. So the secret really is in getting the hole size drilled. You know, choosing the proper hole size. If you're too big, it's going to slip. Too small, you're not going to get your nut bolt and washer casting in. So I, you know, you get out your calipers, measure the uh, the uh, sprue uh, bolt component of the casting, and get a drill size one or two up from that size. I'd really like to use a number 55, but I don't have a number 55 drill. I've apparently either broke it or lost it. So I'm, I'm actually using one that's a little, little larger than normal right now, but it's holding perfectly fine. So, you know, I, I can, I've been toying with the idea of just next time I do an under, a, a, a truss rod job, just taking every single, a picture of each pass through. So I'll, that'd, I'll, that'd be helpful. I'll do that. Uh, ooh, wow. I guess I could do that next week. I've got, I've got the, the, the project I'm working on right now, it's, it's turned into a bit of a horror. Uh, but one of the two cars, it's just about ready to start the underbody. I, I've done the, I've done 90% of the superstructure, but it's, 
I was going to do its uh, mate next. It's it's catching up slowly in the background, but uh, I could do both at the same time. I'm pretty good at multitasking. So Martin, it's Greg. I have a question for you. Uh, right. To make it easier to tell your cars apart, I assume you number them and possibly put road names or something on them. How do you do that? What do you use to do that? Uh, sometimes I don't. Sometimes they're just captive maintenance away cars. I don't worry about it then. Um, I generally letter my cars using dry transfers. I don't use too many decals on this era of car. I'm um, usually, I, I had a... Uh, I don't know how many sheets, 100 sheets or 100, no, maybe 50 sheets uh, made up for Cumberland Valley Railroad by uh, Clover House. So I just uh, go into my, my cigar box of uh, dry transfers and uh, do dry transfers. Then, then you don't have to worry about gloss coating or anything. So, that, you know, your paint being you know, on the surface being a little rough and being a uh, natural paint surface. It's, they, they, they stick rather nicely. So, yeah, doing dry transfers is, I've gotten to really like dry transfers for, uh, particularly for some of the uh, more interesting cars for that uh, Clover House has uh, sets for. In fact, I buy, every now and then I buy a set of dry transfers or three from uh, Clover House before I even start the car, because I just like the, I just like the, uh, the dry transfers. I think that's cool. I have to have a car with that on it. And I've never, I'm never going to see one anywhere else. And he has such a great catalog of stuff in all different scales. So, you know, I actually recommend people go to his site, download the catalog and, and, and wind your way through it and ha have a good look. But there's all kinds of fun stuff in there that would really be kind of cool. That's earlier era cars, I freely admit it. But every now and then you just need to have a really colorful, different, unique car on your layout just for fun. And, and they're yeah. kind of they're a little tricky. Put they're a little tricky doing when, when they get to the multicolor ones because you have to align them all, uh, put down a layer, seal it, put down another layer, seal it, and you don't use a doll coat for that because uh, that actually is not entirely those dry transfers aren't entirely uh, compatible with that doll coat. I'm actually using uh, Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. Anything else? I guess I have guess. You, have oh. you ever considered using uh, um, outside hung brake shoes on your arch bar trucks? Outside ones? No, never done outside ones. Uh, I have I have tried to put some inside ones on, but I, the outside ones with an, uh, with an end beam on the outside it could be interesting to really date, backdate them even further. It's a nice idea. I've got, I know I've got, I've got a few. Uh, bags of castings of those too so yeah it's something I, I should look around and play with a little bit on some of the earlier cars uh martin in lieu of dull coat what do you use to seal your dry transfers rust-oleum matte clear ah okay thank you uh, uh, fair warning it's really stinky <laughs> that's what well, I mean, god I mean, made I, spray booths yeah well that one if i even spray in the basement one short spray i hear screams of anguish upstairs mm. so and she can tell you're using that stuff again aren't you yeah i was i get caught so that one I hear you yeah so if, I, if i'm if i'm painting with flow quill she knows it but that's okay that's not too bad but yeah other spray rattle cans not too bad that one that particular one i don't know what the formulation is in it but it's particularly noxious. <laughs> thank you. Hey, Martin, I, thank you so much. I appreciate it so much tonight. Thank you. No problem. I'll have to put together some slides uh, on uh, underbody now. I have to remember to do that. Fantastic.